Hi, I'm Jim Selleck, piano technician. Today, we address a burning question which has baffled piano owners and players starting in the 19th century all the way through the 20th and still remains a tantalizing mystery today. I refer, of course, to the maddening quandary, what the heck is that darn middle pedal on the piano for? The answer is a firm and resounding, it depends. Since the invention of the horizontal piano around the year 1700, a smaller instrument having less than five octaves, followed by the addition of the sustain pedal in 1711, the one on the right on modern pianos, the development of the cast iron harp and expansion to seven octaves by 1820, and finally the invention of the double escapement action in 1821, and still the standard today, in fact, Nearly all of the innovations found in a grand piano built today were invented before the year 1860. The final big change came with the invention of overstringing, where the bass strings are above and the higher, thinner strings cross underneath, which was patented in 1859 by a gentleman named Henry Steinway, Jr. In all that time, there has been confusion about what the left two pedals do and what they are for. Nearly everyone calls the left pedal the soft pedal because it generally does make the sound of the piano somewhat softer, especially on a vertical or upright piano. But you see, that's where part of the confusion lies. Before the 1820s, there was a pretty uniform answer to the question. All pianos were grands or horizontal designs, and if they had three pedals, the left was color change, the center sostenuto, and the ever popular right pedal was, of course, to sustain all of the notes. I will explain sostenuto in a minute, but for now, please be patient. In the early 1800s, the first tall, upright, or vertical pianos became available. And since marketing sometimes appears to be about making things as difficult to understand as possible, they were sold under the name Upright Grands, a befuddling mixed terminology that persisted into the early 20th century. The mechanism of a vertical or upright piano, the moving parts called the action, is fundamentally and completely different than the action of a horizontal or grand piano. It is, in fact, impractical and nearly functionally impossible to make the left and center pedals do the same things on an upright that they do on a grand. Thus the it depends answer. To be clear, each note of all pianos, grand or upright, produces sound when a hard felt hammer strikes one, two, or three strings tuned together, in unison to that individual note. To stop the strings from ringing, when you let up the key, a softer felt damper pad is brought in contact with the strings of that note, muting it, stopping it from ringing. All 88 notes have a hammer. Starting from the bass end, there are about 70 damper pads. The very highest notes do not need one as their sound naturally dies out quickly. The left pedal on a properly adjusted or regulated grand piano will move the entire keyboard slightly, less than about an eighth of an inch to the side. This moves the hammers in relation to the strings so that they are struck by a lesser used and therefore theoretically softer part of the felt. This results in a slightly warmer or darker sound, often thought of as softer, but not by much if at all. In fact, most grand piano left pedals are incorrectly adjusted to move the keyboard so far off to the side that one string of the triple unisons is missed entirely, which does make the sound softer, but it's not what the designers intended. On an upright piano, it's not really practical to move the action to the side. So when you press down the left pedal, instead, the hammers, all of them, are moved about an inch closer to the strings, reducing the strength of the hammer strikes and making the sound of the piano softer. Therefore, on an upright piano, the term soft pedal is correct. Now, we finally come to the answer to the mystery. As I said before, the middle pedal on a grand piano activates a function called sostenuto. Now, 
In music, that term simply means to sustain notes or hold them to or beyond their written time value, which tells us absolutely nothing about what the pedal does. We all know that the right pedal sustains all of the piano's notes. It does that by pulling all of the damper pads away from the strings, enabling them all to ring freely. The difference is the middle sostenuto pedal sustains only some of the piano's notes, specifically those you already have pressed down when you step on the pedal. That enables the player to hold down some notes, perhaps a bass note and a chord, step on the middle pedal, then lift their hands, which are left free now to play staccato passages freely while the sostenuto notes ring on. It's a very cool effect, which in practice is almost never used. Unfortunately, it would be virtually impossible or certainly mechanically impractical to incorporate a true full sostenuto mechanism into a vertical piano action. So, what does the middle pedal do on an upright? Well, that's complicated. I have been told that a long time ago, a company tried selling a line of two-pedal uprights, and according to the story, people would not buy them, thinking they were being cheated. They had no idea what that middle pedal was for, but they damn sure weren't going to buy a piano that did not have one. And so, the split damper bar was created. This enabled the bass and treble section damper pads to be pulled away from the strings separately. The right pedal, as always, raises all of the dampers. But now, the middle pedal sustains only the bass note dampers. The thinking among the engineers must have been that this enables the player to have a sort of poor man's partial sostenuto by enabling you to strike a note in the bass, then hold down the middle pedal to sustain it, leaving your hands free to play staccato passages in the upper and middle notes. Again, it's a cool idea that is almost never used. So, in the late 20th century, those upright piano engineers put their heads together and eventually came up with a really practical use for the middle pedal. If you have a taller upright piano that is under 40 years old, you may have a center practice pedal which can lock down, making the piano almost inaudible, enabling students to practice their finger exercises while mom and dad are able to watch TV in the next room. The practice pedal works by lowering a felt muffler strip between the hammers and strings, instantly reducing the sound of the piano to a point where the notes should be audible only to the player. So, in summary, if you have a grand piano, it probably has full sostenuto, operated by the middle pedal. I have seen rare exceptions in some very small two-pedal baby grand pianos, and I've also run across two larger instruments where the sostenuto mechanism had been removed for reasons I cannot fathom. Perhaps somebody did not understand what it was for, so they just took it out. I don't know. On the other hand, if you have an upright piano, one of the older instruments or the shorter ones, spinet or console design, your middle pedal will likely sustain the bass dampers only. If you have a taller, newer vertical, your middle pedal may engage a muffler strip to enable nearly silent practice mode. And there you have it. I hope your lives will now be more stress-free since you no longer have to worry constantly about not knowing the function of that darn middle pedal.